Hi, my name is Jason Henley. I work for the Geological Services Unit with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. Um, today we're going to install a uh, Cox Colvin vapor pin and some concrete. We utilize the Makita rotary hammer drill um, for all of our concrete boring. Um, we use an inch and a half drill bit with a carbide tip. We also use a, a Cox Colvin drill guide. And to finish our hole out, we use a, a 5 8 drill bit carbide tip to go through our slab. We have our completed borehole here and we use the inch and a half drill bit first to a depth of about an inch and a half. Then we placed our drill guide which is also about an inch and a half from here to here in the hole. Then we picked up our 5 8 drill bit and inserted it into this into this hole and then drilled through the slab. This drill guide also hold, it also holds your drill bit straight so then your pin will be straight up and down. After our bore hole is drilled and our inside hole is drilled we're going to install the Cox Colvin vapor pin. And how you do that is you screw this into here and this is what works best for me and then you take a silicone sleeve and you slide it over the top of it. Just like that. You then use the same T-handle and there's a hole in the bottom of it and you insert the Cox Colvin pin into that hole and insert it into your hole, into your inside hole. You then take a dead blow hammer and pound it down until it stops. It will only go so far. You then want to rub your hand over this to make sure that your your uh, pin is below the concrete. You want to take the cover that's supplied in the kit and put over the barb fitting. Cox Colvin does supply two different options for covering the hole. The first one is a black plastic cap which is good for your uh, residential houses or you know something like that where you're not going to get a, a bunch of foot traffic. Then they also came up with this idea of actually this actually screws to the vapor pin and this is more for your industrial settings that you can uh, you know that they're going to drive fork trucks over and trucks and whatnot and it protects the pin. All right, here we are. We set this vapor pin about 45 minutes to an hour ago and now it's ready to sample. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the equipment that the MDQ uses that I use um, to do my sampling. First, I use a gem, a 2000 meter. It measures CH4, CO2, and oxygen. That's the first step that I do in my, in my sampling. After I do that, I hook up, I, I use quarter inch Tigon tubing and I hook that directly to the well. I then hook up my, my soil gas regulator and these come in many shapes and sizes. Uh, it just depends on your lab and, and, and what, you know, wherever you get your supplies. Once that's hooked up, this is my helium chamber that I use. Um, this right here hooks directly to the soil gas regulator and then this gets placed over the hole. And this line right here goes to the helium. The helium is an ultra high pure helium. Um, we use this because you cannot use the light or the party grade heliums because of the additives that are in that that's in that helium the xylenes and the tylenes 
Um, if you do end up having a leak, you'll trash your regulator out before you even get a chance to use it. So the first step in sampling is you must use gloves. You must use sample gloves. And these sample gloves are only good for one location. You throw them away at the end of sampling this location. You got your hole, your Cox Colvin vapor pin. First thing that you want to do is take off your protective cover, your black cover that you had on it or the stainless steel cover. Then you take off the inside cover over the pin. At the DEQ we use the GEM 2000 meter and this is the first step that I do in sampling. And you just put the tubing right over the pin and then take your readings. After you've done your gem, you document all of your readings, all your oxygen, CH4, CO2 levels, and mark them all down on a piece of paper. Make sure everything is safe. Then you put that off to the side. Your next step that you want to do is I use quarter inch Tigon tubing and you actually put this directly onto the vapor pin so it's secure and it's not going to fall off. Once you have your tubing securely fastened to the vapor pin, you then want to take your soil gas regulator and hook the other side of that tubing up to the regulator. Make sure it's good and secure on there. After you have your soil gas regulator securely fastened to the tubing, you then want to take your, your helium shroud and hook it to the vapor pin. And that's done by the quick connect that's on the soil gas regulator hooks directly to the helium shroud. Then you collapse everything back over the hole with your solar gas regulator on the inside. After you have your soil gas regulator hooked to your, your helium shroud and your helium shroud and your soil gas regulator over the hole and down on the ground or concrete, this will work on all surfaces. The, the next step you want to do is you want to take this and put it on the other side of your hood where there's just a, a barb fitting coming out. You want to insert this onto there. After you have this installed, this is going to be your purge point, you want to make sure that the valve is shut off. Your next step is to take your tubing that's located on the, uh, that's affixed to the helium shroud on the other side of it and affix it to your helium. Again, make sure it's on there good and tight. After we have securely fastened the tubing 
to the helium. You then want to turn on your helium. And turn the dial to about 10 PSI. And let it flow into the hood for about 10 to 15 seconds. After you've let it flow at 10 PSI for 10 to 15 seconds, this helium shroud should be full of helium. You then want to take your 60 millimeter milliliter syringe and screw it onto the valve that you put on earlier for purging. After you have your syringe hooked to your valve, you then want to do three full pulls at 60 milliliters. And what this is going to do is any helium that's inside this shroud, if there's a leak in your sample train, it'll come out in here. You want to open your valve, pull a full pull, close your valve, unscrew it, and then exhaust it. You want to do that three times. Once you pulled three syringes full, you then want to take your ResTech helium meter, insert it into the valve, and turn your valve on. If you get helium here, that means that somewhere in your sampling train, you have a leak in your regulator, in your tubing, somewhere in that area, you have a leak. If you don't get helium here, that means your solar gas regulator and your tubing are tight and you're ready to sample. Now, to make sure that you have helium in your shroud, what you want to do is after you've done this, you want to lift the helium shroud up just a little bit and stick your probe underneath the hood. Your helium meter should go off. If it doesn't go off, you don't have any helium in there. Once you have done your helium check and you know that your sampling train is, is good and there's no leaks, you then want to lift up your helium shroud and unhook the solar gas regulator from the helium shroud and set this off to the side. At this point, you want to check your gauge and make sure that your gauge reads zero. Sometimes in the process of doing your helium check, the gauge will get stuck up on, you know, negative two, negative three, negative four. And you want to write that number down because when you hook it to your bottle, this gauge will not go back to zero. It'll read your new, your new zero is whatever this gauge reads. Once you have written down your gauge number, you want to take your soil gas sampling bottle, take off the lid if there is one, and then hook the two together. Note the time as when you hooked that bottle to the regulator. It should only take somewhere between 6 and 12 minutes to get your sample. After you have taken your sample, you want to unhook the soil gas regulator from the bottle, put your lid back on the bottle, and now this is your sample. You want to label it, do whatever you need to do. That's done. 
once you take your bottle off you want to unhook your solar gas regulator from your tubing and now this regulator is no longer good to use on the site it's dirty from taking this sample after you take off your solar gas regulator the last step that we at the DEQ do is we use our multi-ray four gas meter and we hook it up to the same tubing and we let this run and uh, after it's done running after a couple of minutes we write down the figures and put it on our log sheet after you've taken your readings down and put them on your log sheet just unhook this take off your tubing this tubing is no longer any good for the site this gets thrown away it cannot be reused you then want to put your cover back over your little white protective cover back over it and then put your cover back on it and you are done this concludes our demonstration of how to install the Cox Colvin vapor pin and the helium shroud sampling method um, all of this information can be found in the uh, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality VI standard operating procedures